Ha, scared you. It's Mr. Leatherwood. And I thought I would do my own video, all by my lonesome, about comparing fractions using common denominators. We've used models this week. We've used uh, four or five different strategies to compare fractions. And now I wanted to go kind of just to the numbers and teach you how to compare fractions using common denominators and using least common multiple, which is what we used a little bit this week. So let's compare two fractions. Let's start with... Oh, I don't know. Let's do 5 sevenths, and we're going to compare that to, I don't know, what's a good one? How about 4 sixths? Okay. Now, to compare fractions, technically, you want them to be the same size. And what we cut our fractions into is our denominators, which, so you would think, well, let's make our denominators the same. And then our model should look the same. So I need to find a common denominator between 7 and 6. And the way I do that is I find the least common multiple. And we've done this before on a different video. So I'm going to go ahead and write out my multiples for these two numbers. So I'm going to write out 7, 14, 21. And all that is is 7 times 1, 7 times 2, 7 times 3. Uh, after 21, we get 28. Then we go to 35. Then we go to 42, we go to 49. This is when learning your facts comes in really handy because you can do it very quickly like I just did. And then for 6, I'm going to go 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, and hopefully I can stop. They have anything in common? Oh no, they don't. So I'm going to keep going. 36. Still got to go, 42. Well, looky there. 42 happens to be their least common multiple. So that means that I'm going to make my bottom numbers, my denominators, 42 on both sides. 42. Okay, now here's the tricky part. I'm going to go, okay, I went from 6 to 42. How did I do that? Well, I did 6 times 7. And you can check that by looking down here. I did 6 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we know the trick. If we do something on the bottom, we have to do it on the top. So if I did times 7 on the bottom, I have to do times 7 on the top. 4 times 7 is 28. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing over here. How did I get from 7 to 42? Well, I didn't multiply it by 7, because that would give me 49. What I did is I multiplied it by 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So notice it's different on each side. Over here I multiplied by 7, but over here I multiplied by 6. And the important part is to look at each individual fraction by itself. So, if I did 7 times 6 on the bottom, what do I have to do on top? I also have to do times 6. 5 times 6 equals 30. You're like, okay, why did I do all this work? This was a lot of work to figure out something. Well, now it's really easy. They're both, the mo if I drew a model, they both have 42 pieces. If it was a pizza, they'd both have 42 slices. If it was a pan of brownies, it'd have 42 brownies in both pans. Then it's really easy to see, oh, well, 30 is bigger than 28. And since they're the same size pieces now, I know that 5 sevenths is greater than 4 sixths, using my original fractions. Or 30 over 42 is greater than 28 over 42. Isn't that cool? It's pretty cool. So that's my little trick on how to use common denominators to compare two fractions, or three fractions, or four fractions, whatever you want to do. I'll give you a little tip. You need to know this for your quiz on Friday. So good luck. If you have any questions, make sure you ask me in class. Um, let me give you a couple of practice problems real quick. So hold on. Let's see. Let's do... You don't have to bring these. These are just for you. Let's do three-fourths and... Uh... Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Hold on. Don't laugh at me. I hear you laughing. I can hear it. I'm at home now, but I can hear it. 
two knights, and let's do a hard one. Let's do two sixths, uh, four fifths, and seven ninths. And I want you to put them least to greatest. This could be tricky. So good luck. Really, good luck. No, seriously. Really good luck. All right, have fun. Talk to you later.